Exercising in the setting of MS can be downright difficult. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist here in Columbus, Ohio. In this video series, I'm helping demystify exercising in the setting of multiple sclerosis. If you've missed the earlier videos, don't fret. I'll throw a card up here so you can check that out later. This video will be focused on using pharmacology, lotions and potions, to enhance exercise performance in the setting of MS. Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Exercise is a key element to living your best life despite having MS. And yet, getting out there and hoofing it is really, really challenging, particularly when you have MS. This video series is dedicated to helping you demystify exercise for multiple sclerosis, and previous videos have focused on various aspects of exercise, such as exercise selection and exercise programming. This video, we're going to be talking about medications, prescribed drugs, which can literally enhance exercise performance in MS. Get out a pen and paper and let's... Quick medical disclaimer. As with all the videos on this channel, my intention here is to educate, to empower, and to energize. I'm not giving you medical recommendations, and I'm certainly not recommending that you take any of the medicines I'm about to talk about without supervision from your healthcare provider. Okay, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump in. The first drug I'd like to talk about is called Ampira or in Europe, it's called Fampira. 4-aminopyridine is the generic name. This is a medication, FDA approved here in the US for multiple sclerosis, specifically to help with heat sensitivity and motor fatigue. You may find that when you're casually walking, you have absolutely no problems doing so. However, if you started walking in the heat or on a forced hike, or if you were maybe jogging or running, after your core body temperature heats up, you short circuit and your legs become weak, or you have to stop. And until you cool back down, you can't keep going. This is unfortunately very common in the setting of MS. And the medication Ampira can help buttress against heat sensitivity. It's actually pretty fantastic. Now I have dedicated videos on the channel explaining how Ampira works. So I'll throw a card up here so you can check that out later. It's a twice a day medicine. And it's not without side effects. And so, for example, if you have a seizure disorder, this is a no-no medicine. I also must share that only about a half of patients that try the medicine notice a benefit. But when you notice a benefit, it's nearly a Lazarus effect, a oh my gosh, because you can go out and participate in physical activity, you can heat your core body temperature up, and you don't short circuit. For people that respond to Empira, it can be a complete game changer. And not only does it help in day-to-day -day life, it can help in the gym or on the playing field, and it can certainly help exercise. So the first drug to consider is Ampira, 4-aminopyridine. Fatigue is the most common symptom in multiple sclerosis. And sometimes when I'm talking to someone with MS in clinic about exercising, they look at me like I'm an alien. They are so exhausted, they're barely able to get through their workday, let alone consider putting on tennis shoes and going outside and exercising. I understand that. Fortunately, there's a class of medicine that can help. These are stimulants. Medicines like modafinil and armodafinil, the trade names here in the United States are provigil and nuvigil, or amphetamine salts, things like Adderall, Ritalin, and Focalin. These stimulants help keep people awake. They trick the brain into being more awake so you can be more attentive and remember better. If you're struggling with energy, we absolutely want to combat that. And I oftentimes use these stimulant medications to help with that. There's an added extra benefit because you can take some of that energy onto the soccer field or into the gymnasium and get in a good workout. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video, do me a kind favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you! Low levels of testosterone in men with multiple sclerosis has a negative impact on the disease. Quite literally, gentlemen with low T have a faster progression of MS. They have more cognitive impairment, they have more pathologic fatigue, and they certainly have difficulties in the bedroom. If we supplement testosterone, it can help with energy, it can help with fatigue, it can help with cognition, it can slow the disease down, and testosterone 
is a secondary sex hormone in men, and it can help with putting on muscle mass and improving exercise gains in the gym. We can use testosterone to our advantage with men with MS, both in the workplace and at home and in the gymnasium. If you have low T, I think it's worthwhile to talk to your MS neurologist about supplementing. Spasticity is a monster. It's all too common in the setting of MS. Cramps, spasms, charley horses, limbs that are hard to bend can really interfere with your ability to walk, let alone try to exercise. Spasticity is something that responds to stretching, and I think it's a best practice to stretch up to three times a day, and certainly before an exercise regimen. But there are medicines that can help with spasticity. I have many patients that will suffer from a hand cramp or a leg cramp or a spasm if they try to exercise. And so we will pre-treat with a medicine called baclofen. Baclofen is a central acting muscle relaxant. It's prescribed very frequently for MS spasticity and it can be used prior to physical therapy or prior to a workout to make sure that we don't have spasms and cramps. As a result, this can help us be much more successful in our exercise regimens. Continuing the topic of spasticity, sometimes the amount of oral baclofen that you would have to take in order to relax a muscle would also make you sleep, which would make it darn near impossible to exercise. In these situations, we can use a different medicine, Botox injections, which can be very, very helpful in decreasing spasticity. If we inject Botox into your calf, it will help decrease spasms and cramps in your calf. And there are no systemic effects, and I really like that. So if we're using Botox to treat focal spasticity, it's not going to make you sleepy and groggy. Again, this can really help in the gymnasium and on the playing field. Consider Botox for spastic muscles. Let's address neuropathic pain. Unfortunately, pain is very common in the setting of MS. And you may develop a foot that feels like it's burning or a hand that feels like it's being crushed in a vise, or an arm that feels like it's freezing, or electrical zips down your back into your feet when you move your head. These can interfere with the quality of your life, and they certainly could interfere with your workouts. We can use neuropathic pain medicines to dampen, diminish, or remove those painful sensations, helping you live a better life and helping you be more successful in the gym. There are a lot of neuropathic pain medicines. Now, almost all of them were initially invented for other purposes. For example, seizure medicines that help with neuropathic pain or antidepressant medicines that help with neuropathic pain. And yes, they all have a host of side effects, but used judiciously, they can really make a big benefit. These are things like gabapentin, which is Neurontin, or pregabalin, which is Lyrica, Topiramate, which is Topamax, Lamotrigine, which is Lamictal. There are medicines like Elevil and Pamlor. These are really powerful medicines that can help with neuropathic pain. If you have an ouchy yaya, which is limiting your ability to get on the treadmill or to lift weights, consider talking to your neurologist about neuropathic pain medicines. Keeping on the topic of neuropathic pain, sometimes the burning in your feet, which interferes with your ability to get on the treadmill, is super, super annoying, and yet you don't want to take or you can't tolerate taking oral medicines to dampen that burning sensation. In these instances, I've had great success using lidocaine patches. So lidocaine is the medicine that the dentist uses to numb up your mouth during a dental procedure, and the medicine lidocaine can be embedded onto a, a film, and you peel off the sticky tape, and you can stick it on part of your body and numb that area up. I love this as an option for burning feet or for a burning arm or leg because you can apply it right before your workout and there are no systemic effects. I had an enlightening conversation with one of my patients who is absolutely committed to exercise as part of his lifestyle. And he figured out a very clever tool to help him exercise more successfully. He shared with me that when he gets on his Peloton bike and after he starts pedaling for a few minutes, his core body temperature heats up and his left leg starts burning. Now in the past he shared that the discomfort was so severe that he would stop exercising, which was really counterpoint to his goals. He didn't unfortunately have very good success with neuropathic pain medicines, but he did find one medicine that works very, very well. Cannabis, marijuana. He shared that if he vapes marijuana prior to getting on the bike, 
Then he starts pedaling and his core body temperature heats up. His left leg starts burning, but he doesn't care. And I specified, I said, no, wait a second. You're saying the cannabis makes the pain go away? He said, absolutely not, Dr. B. The pain is there, but the cannabis makes it so I really don't care about it. And even though my leg is burning, I can keep going. Now that is a really interesting use of cannabis and it allows him to have a much more meaningful exercise regimen. It allows him to exercise for much longer. And I'd be curious if anyone else listening to this has noticed a benefit to exercise using cannabinoids. If you'd like to up your game and help this channel grow, please click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.